Hey guys, DJ Slink here, and I'm back with another Ableton tutorial. Uh, firstly, I'd like to say thanks to everybody who gave me some really good feedback for my other tutorials. So that's really motivated me to get some more tutorials going. So just a quick one for today, I'm going to show you a couple of little tricks here. So, oh, hang on a minute. So uh, this is a track uh, that I've been working on, and uh, I've sort of just cut a piece out and deleted a bunch of channels because it was making my CPU run really slow. But um, let's just have a listen to this first. Yeah, you get the idea. Alright, so what I want to show you guys is this little thing down here which I call the sidechain delay reverb thingy and uh, basically what you achieve with this is sort of like this backwards reverb sound so let's so sorry let's uh, solo both of these channels and you can sort of hear what's happening here so you can kind of hear the reverb sort of coming in delayed and sort of, um, I don't know, breathing in after the sound's already happened. Um, and the way I'm achieving that is just with a simple rack here. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff in here that we don't really need, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to build one of these from scratch. So just forget about this other stuff. This is just part of the processing for the sound. And um, so let's listen to the sound as it is now. pretty boring. So what we need to do, um, start off with a reverb obviously, just throw it in, just change the uh, low cut so that it's not reverbing any of the lows here. Um, we'll turn the decay time up a little bit, we'll turn the stereo and the size up and we'll turn the quality up to high. I'm not really sure if that makes it any, any more quality, like any higher quality but I always do that. And we'll change this to full wet and yeah, we can get rid of the pre-delay. So once we've got that, it'll sound like this. So, so it's just a reverb. Um, and what we want to do is put that in a group just by pressing Command J or Control J, uh, G, sorry, G for, uh, blah, 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 G for group. And we're going to create another chain and we're going to call this chain dry and call this other chain uh, reverb, right? So now we have a wet signal for just the reverb and a dry signal to let the, the bass sound through. So let's listen now. Okay, so we've got our reverb and we've got our dry. So what we want to do now is add <coughs> a compressor in um, after the reverb. And we'll just click this down here because I'm kind of used to this view from Ableton 8. And what we're going to do is just crank the ratio up all the way, turn the attack all the way down, and the release time we're going to have to play with a little bit. Um, but before we play with that, we're going to turn on sidechain. So I just click that little arrow to, to um, show this um, section. And then I'm going to select the channel that we're working in right now, which is 20 audio up here you can see. So what this is going to achieve is it's going to sidechain itself. So when there's sound here playing, um, the reverb is going to be sidechained, meaning the reverb is going to be reduced in volume until the sound ends. And then it's going to come up in volume according to the release time that we set on here. So I found about oh, about 200, 250 or so sounds pretty cool. So let's have a listen to that. Oh yeah. <laughs> and you've got to set the threshold like all the way down. I almost forgot about that. Uh, you can turn the knee down as well. So it's just like more, it's, it's a bit sharper. Okay. Right, you hear that? So the cool thing about this is you can have reverb on your like big fat sounds without 
making them any louder because it's sidechain in itself. So during the bass sound itself, there's no reverb to be heard at all. And it's only after or when there's gaps in the sound when you can hear the reverb. And uh, I think that's pretty useful. And you get this cool like breathing sound without adding any more to the, the, the signal level. Um, yeah, so it works pretty cool on a, on a bunch of different sounds. Let's, um, oh yeah, and the other trick I wanted to show you is, so let's say we've, we've got this set up how we like it. We can call this uh, Slink's Cool Sidechain Reverb, right? And this is the best thing about Ableton, why I really love Ableton. Up here you've got this little thing called User Library, and if you click on that, you can see I've made a folder in here just by right clicking and going new folder and I've got a bunch of little tools in here, I've got some percussion presets and some you know little instruments and bass lines and stuff that I've already made and I've got some tools in here as well and uh, basically this is so awesome I can just take this rack and drag it in here and then BAM press enter and I've got this rack in here forever so if I want to use the same thing on a different channel I can just drag it in and bam! So you can come up with all your little cool racks that you use a lot and get re really creative with it and just drag things in and it speeds up your uh, your workflow and you know if you spend a long time making some crazy epic rack you can just use it again so I find that really really handy. Also to note um, let me just delete that, um, it will uh, the way you save it is the way it will appear when you drag it in. So if I wanted to make sure that the compressor is visible, because I'll need to select the audio every time I drag it in to a new channel, um, then I can save it like this. right? And then when I drag it in, the compressor is visible. I can set the input, and then bam, I'm good to go. So yeah. So anyway, let's see what it sounds like on this other sound over here. Let me just... Just, com just condense all that. So this is the sound we have here. So you can hear there's a, a lot more frequent sounds, but there's still some gaps where we could have some reverse kind of sidechain reverb happening. So let's use the rack that we've already saved here. We'll drag it in. We'll choose our input. And in this case, it's 17 instrument rack because I was lazy and didn't didn't name it and let's have a listen to what it sounds like pretty cool pretty cool um, so we can tweak this a bit further and just you know change the decay time and really tweak the release time um, both these things to just tighten it up so that it breathes in you know sort of at the same time as the tempo and uh, yeah you just gotta listen to it and feel it and yeah so that's my little cool sidechain reverb thingy um, ah, I'll show you another thing while we're here um, <clears throat> I'm not really a big fan of using return channels I'm using one right now so I can record this video but pretty much all my projects don't have any return channels um, I don't know why that is I just prefer I think it's kind of messy and it's sort of complicated to have like things going into there and I don't know I like the freedom of changing plugins to suit each channel so what I do instead is I usually just make racks to um to just quickly drag in onto channels so say I've got three channels that I want to have an echo on I've got a little simple echo rack that I've made here I can just drag it in so the cool thing about this is the way I've made this rack is you can actually use it like a return channel. So let me show you. We'll go back to this channel over here with this uh, other bass. So we'll delete that other um, channel there. Um, so I'll build this rack from scratch really quick here. So all it is is a simple delay in a group. Okay, um, we've got two chains. This will be dry, 
and this will be wet, I'm not going to bother naming it, turn this all the way to wet, set your delay time, so 4-4 four, four, probably, I'm going to set the feedback to 60-ish, um, and now what we want to do is be able to control the signal between, um, but like before this delay channel, so the way the way you would sort of think it would work is you could just automate this on and off, yeah. But as soon as you turn it off, it stops the echoing. So this is kind of a, a weird tutorial, but basically I like to throw a utility in and then macro map the mute button and the gain button to the same knob. And then in if I click mapping, I can check this out. So I want the maximum of this knob to be 0 on the gain knob, so it goes from negative 35 dB to 0 dB, and I want the, the, um, the mute button to turn on the second that I click it off the very, the very left position. So as it's happening now, the mute knob doesn't turn on until I get past, so you can see it sort of turn on after I get past halfway there. And uh, I always forget, I think I've got to have this set to 0 and that set to 1, is that? Or is it, is it the other way around? So, yep, there we go. So it, you can see the second I turn this knob up a little bit, the mute, knob, the mute button unmutes and then it lets the signal through and then I can turn the volume up. So we can name this to, I don't know, engage. <laughs> and uh, we can automate this knob to just go up and down really quickly and it'll have a cool uh, echo effect. So let's do that over here. Bam. Let's listen. Okay, that did not work. <laughs> uh, I must have the, um, the mute knob around the wrong way. So zero and one. Okay, let's try that again. So there you go, um, and then you're not. So the the advantage of doing things like this in this rack is that you don't have these long, sort of, automations that are sort of looking like this and really hard to manage. It's just a, a quick like spike in the automation lane here, and it's yeah really easy to manage and and see what's happening. Um, the other cool thing is you can also map this feedback knob to here, and you know you can quickly control it from there and also the chain volume so you can say uh, echo volume and then you can collapse all that call this simple echo rack and oh you can even color this pink look at that there we go isn't that beautiful and then just go ahead and drag it into your little tools folder and use it anytime you like Oh, okay. No, I'm not going to do that. Version 2. There we go. And bam. Use it on any channel, anytime. Automate this knob and you're sweet. Cool. I hope you find this little tutorial uh, useful. And uh, if you have any ideas for other tutorials that you'd like to see me do, please let me know in the comments below. Or send me a tweet or Facebook message. Or get in contact with me via post. I'm not going to give you my personal address, I'm just kidding. Alright, thanks. Peace out.